He's God in the Father. He's God in the Son. He's God in the Holy Ghost. And all these three are one. I know God is God. And God don't ever change. I know God is God. And Jesus is his name. Praise the Lord. Welcome back, saints and seekers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining me. I am in chapter 2 of First John, and uh, this is really discussing true righteousness. So, wisdom from the Word. That's where we need to get our wisdom and instruction. That's what the scriptures were given for, for uh, teaching us righteousness, for correcting us and reproving us. And uh, that the man of God should be thoroughly furnished is what one scripture says. So, we, Paul told Timothy, study to show yourself approved. And um, we need to know for ourselves what the word of the Lord says. And you must read it. If you're someone that has a reading problem, uh, you get distracted easily through that. Uh, try listening to the audio. All of these books of the Bible, or you can find, you can download a Bible app. I've never done that. I just simply Google whatever chapter I want to hear when I want to do that. I am more the type of person my mind tends to wander when I'm listening to someone else read. I still do that because I know that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. But I generally uh, listen to it, and then I read it. So I'm kind of a, a reverse distraction person. But, you know, Satan is very much trying to steal the word all the time and distract. So before you go to the reading, uh, pray over it that you will not be distracted. And let's just do that today. Heavenly Father, we love and worship and praise you. Thank you for the beautiful day you've given for the opportunity to redeem the time, to share the word with someone, to uh, be a help to our fellow men in some way in this earth today, that we can encourage one another and strengthen one another. We thank you for your word. We ask that you just uh, help us to hear what you are saying to us today through this word. We bind the enemy from stealing the word. We bind all distracting thoughts. And uh, we just pray for clear focus every time we come to your word to read or when we come to listen to that word being read. In Jesus' name, bless my friends, family, subscribers today. Thank you for those that have joined recently. And uh, we just pray that you grow us in your word that we can be good ambassadors for the Lord Jesus Christ in Jesus name we pray amen chapter 2 of 1st John my little children these things write I unto you that ye sin not and if any man sin we have an advocate with the Father Jesus Christ the righteous so John's continuing from uh, chapter 1 letting us know that we are not to sin. We are to give glory and honor to the Father. But we are still in this flesh state. The Lord recognizes that. If we do sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So propitiation, he took the place. He was the substitution for our punishment that we should receive for our sins he took it all on himself the sins of the whole world that doesn't leave anybody out as far as who he died for but you still have to claim that salvation you must believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the son of God and call on his name to be saved verse 3 and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments how do we know that we know him if we keep his commandments there's another scripture that says if you love me you will keep my commandments verse 4 he that saith i know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar 
and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. So we're walking as the Lord Jesus walked. We're doing what Jesus did. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which we ye had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. He that saith he is in the light, and hateth his brother, is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. So, you know what? We've done things to people. People have done things to us. We have to let all of that go. Forgive. Forgive just means let it go. You know, you bind yourself up when you keep hard feelings about others. But you bind other people up, too, from uh, receiving um, what they need to receive from the Lord. They need his mercy. You need his mercy. And we are told in other scripture, if you do not show mercy to others, God will not show mercy to you. So we can't uh, go around scriptures like that. We have got to uh, take them in and take care of business. Uh, you know, get rough with ourselves and say enough of this hard feelings, this resentment, this bitterness towards someone that's done you wrong. I release them to the Lord. I forgive. I choose to forgive. I choose to love because I am a saint of God and I'm going to obey the Lord. And these are his commandments. Verse 12, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. Why are our sins forgiven for Jesus' name's sake? He took the penalty for us. I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the Father. I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So we see all the worldliness and corruptness in riches and everything very much being demonstrated in our world today. And we are told to come out of her, come out of Babylon, the Babylonian system, the worldly system. Uh, you know, you can spend all your time chasing after things to please your flesh. And after you've chased after it, you realize there's, there's no satisfaction there. It comes and goes, it comes and goes. It's momentary. Sin is pleasurable for a time, but punishment is eternal. And uh, we have just got to place ourselves in the hands of the Lord. We've got to love the Lord and commit to follow him completely, not loving the world. Let's read 15 again. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You know, the Lord told us you cannot serve God and mammon. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. 
but they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist, that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. So that scripture very much could be meditated on how important it is that we understand our salvation is in Jesus' name alone. Jesus, it's just all complete in him. The, I believe it's in Colossians. The fullness of the Godhead was in him bodily. I might be in the wrong uh, thing there, but the scripture tells us the fullness of the Godhead was in him bodily. Scripture tells us there's no salvation in any other name. Scripture tells us you do not go to the Father except through the Son. So we have just got to call on the name of Jesus to be saved. We need to be baptized in Jesus' name to remit our sins. And we need to repent. We need to turn and walk the way the Lord wants us to walk. And Acts 2.38 tells us, Then you shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. Verse 23, Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. So there's people coming in, you know, trying to tell new believers not saved by grace in Jesus Christ, uh, you know, going back to uh, doing things uh, the way having to be like the Jews to be saved. So he's having to keep writing about these things to tell them you're saved, you obey what you first heard, you're saved by grace in Jesus Christ. But the uh, Verse 27, But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. So, even though it says you don't need any man to teach you, that is uh, true. When the Holy Ghost comes in, he is your teacher. He will... Um, it's the spirit of truth that comes in, and he will lead you into all truth. But, of course, the Lord gave a fivefold ministry to train people up. So we don't want to uh, despise or say that's not needed. That's not what he's saying here. But uh, there, are, there were people coming in teaching the new believers the wrong thing. So he's having to tell them, you don't need them to teach you. Um, you've already received an anointing from the Lord. That anointing that abides in you, the Holy Ghost coming in you, that is your teacher. So, you know, that is what we need to die against all false teachings that are out there, false prophecies that are out there. Pray for discernment and wisdom, but keep in the Word of God, learning the Word yourself, so you are not deceived, and praying, seeking God about everything, everything, and he will lead you. And I've noticed there's always uh, people that are amazed when they come to the Lord, when they begin to seek him, they are amazed by things they're thinking about, and then the Lord sends that answer in some way. It may be the next preaching they hear. It could be uh, someone they meet, on the street, have a conversation with, and that person ministers by the Holy Spirit to them in the thing they were talking about, or the Lord addresses them through the Word of God. That's often how the Lord teaches and instructs us, so we want to be faithful to be in that Word to grow. 
Verse 28, And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. He told us you'll know them by their fruit. So people that are doing good, serving the Lord, they are of the Lord. People that say they're of the Lord, but they are doing evil, they are not of the Lord. You will know them by their fruit. So uh, that's not too hard, is it? doesn't mean you might not witness a true brother and sister making a mistake in the Lord, and they need to be recovered and restored, and you pray for them and help them get restored. And people, you know, there's instructions about that, people that will not listen, and there's a way to go about that. And at some point, yeah, you just uh, can't help them anymore. You've got to turn them over and let the Lord take care of it. I love you. Jesus loves you more. Let's just uh, make sure we represent the Lord well. Speak where we can. Continue in prayer for our world, for our families, for the lost, and that the Lord would undertake. For Israel, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, that the Lord would undertake here in America. The battle continues, and... Uh, God is still on the throne. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. I'm not the only one that seems to be hearing that. Um, know that God is sovereign. It's very important. God is sovereign and he is the one that is all powerful. I love you. Jesus loves you more. Be blessed.